we've been discussing proteins that have been going through the secretory pathway. So remember, this picture here outlines what the secretory pathway is exactly. So we have our proteins that have a signal sequence. This means that they're destined to go through the secretory pathway, and their first step is to get into the ER. And that's demonstrated here with the rough ER at the bottom. You have proteins being translated here and getting into the ER. And then from the ER, they will progress and move in an anterograde fashion, so forward movement, to the next set of networks, which is the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus, remember, includes the cis-Golgi network. This is the first compartment of sorting. So the cis-Golgi network uh, sorts proteins that need to continue on through the secretory pathway versus those that have to go back to the ER. Then we have the cis-Golgi, medial-Golgi, and trans-Golgi. Now, they're not networks, but these are three biochemical compartments. What that means is that there are various enzymes within each of these that are get activated at different times, and what they do is that they will further modify the protein, either add sugars or trim sugar groups, um, help with the folding, things of that nature. And then finally, we get to the trans-Golgi network. This is another area of sorting. Now the trans-Golgi network is going to separate proteins in three distinct paths. One is through regulated secretion. So these are uh, hormones and certain proteins that the body does not need right away until signaled. To, so for example, insulin. So your body, insulin is used to regulate blood glucose levels. Well, you don't need to be producing and secreting insulin all the time, 24-7. So, but the insulin is made and prepared and goes through this pathway and is stored in these secretory granules. And then when the pancreas, for example, receives the signal that there's a high level of blood glucose in the blood, then these secretory granules will receive that signal and fuse with the plasma membrane, thus releasing insulin into the blood. The other pathway that's also set up here through the Trans-Golgi network is the constitutive pathway. So these are proteins that the body constantly needs, that needs to be flowing in the blood um, or establish the extracellular matrix. So collagen, fibronectin, those are your extracellular matrix proteins. Again, those are made by the cells and then secreted through the secretory pathway, the constitutive pathway. Immunoglobulins, aka your antibodies, always go through this pathway as well. And then the third one that we're going to look at in detail now is where you have the lysosomal enzymes. So remember the lysosome was basically what we call the stomach of the cell. So here things are brought into the cell through endocytosis, eventually end up in the lysosome where they get destroyed. So in the lysosome, you have to have these enzymes that do the destruction. So proteases, breaking up proteins, uh, lipidases or lipases, breaking up the lipids, uh, so any fats, and then of course you have glycosidases, which break up any sugars that were on that protein. Okay? But what we want to understand now is how those enzymes, the destructive enzymes, the proteases, the glycosidases, how they get made, and how do they end up in the lysosome where they function. And that's what we're going to talk about now. So these lysosomal enzymes are made out in the cell. They will go through this secretory pathway. And what we're going to see now in detail is how do they know to get to the lysosome where they need to work. And that's what we're going to go to in detail. Once these enzymes, whether it's a protease, lipase, or glycosidase, has been made and it goes through the ER, through the cis-Golgi network, it comes to the first biochemical compartment the cis-Golgi. Now in the cis-Golgi, remember I mentioned that there are various enzymes that are activated which are going to modify the protein. Well this modification that occurs with these lysosomal enzymes is crucial and begins in the cis-Golgi, so the first biochemical compartment. In the cis-Golgi there is an enzyme called the Gluck-NAC phosphotransferase. On your test, if you want, you can abbreviate it GLC-NAC, GLUCNAC. But this GLUCNAC phosphotransferase 
is an enzyme that lives in the cis Golgi. So when these lysosomal enzymes make their way to the cis Golgi, the gluconide phosphotransferase will bind to it, and then it simply through a series of a uh, few steps actually adds a ticket or a modification onto these enzymes. This ticket or modification is called the M6P. Okay, now it's M6P because it's a phosphate that is attached to a mannose in the sixth position. So a mannose is a sugar group that was added to a, this lysosomal enzyme, perhaps in the ER, and then it gets phosphorylated, this mannose at the sixth position, by the gluconac phosphotransferase. Okay. So now you have this lysosomal enzyme with the M6P modification. This M6P modification is going to act as a signal sequence or a ticket in order to say that this protein, this now lysosomal enzyme, is destined to go to the lysosome where it needs to work and function. And now this lysosomal enzyme progresses through the medial, the trans-Golgi, and now it's going to get to the trans-Golgi network where it's going to get sorted. How does it get sorted? So once in the trans-Golgi network, remember I told you this is the final area of sorting for proteins, lysosomal enzymes included. So once we get to the trans-Golgi network, our lysosomal enzyme has the M6P ticket or M6P modification. Awaiting it in the trans-Golgi network, the M6P receptors, right here on the trans-Golgi network membrane, represented here by this little hook. So this little hook is the M6P receptor. So any protein, or in this case lysosomal enzyme, that picked up an M6P modification way back in the cis-Golgi will go ahead and be able to hop on to the M6P receptor. Once we've bound and attached to the M6P receptor, we now go through receptor-mediated endocytosis. So again, once the protein with the M6P modification binds to the M6P receptor, this is going to cause a clathrin-coated pit to form. So we have our clathrin represented here in red, the assembly particle protein in blue, which remember binds to the receptor. And then we have this pit that forms. So we go from a clathrin-coated pit to a clathrin-coated vesicle. And now this clathrin-coated vesicle will travel towards the late endosome. So as the clathrin-coated vesicle begins to move out into the cytoplasm, we lose the protein coats, so we lose the clathrin, we lose the assembly particle. The vesicle is taken to the late endosome, and in the late endosome, remember there is a very low pH, a pH of 5 or 4, because there are V-class pumps that keep the hydrogen concentration inside the late endosome high, and a high hydrogen concentration means a low pH. So because of the low pH in the late endosome, this is going to cause separation. And what we're going to separate is the M6P receptor from the lysosomal enzyme that had the M6P modification. Okay? So basically, the protein here, the lysosomal enzyme, has been dropped off to the late endosome, and it separates from the receptor. And then the lysosomal enzyme then is then taken to its final destination, which is the lysosome, where it functions. Okay? But the M6P receptor is still not done traveling. After we have separation in the late endosome, the M6P receptor gets recycled, and it can get recycled back to two places, either back to the trans-Golgi network to pick up other enzymes that are going through this process, or it can also travel back up to the plasma membrane of the cell. Now the reason that it goes back to the plasma membrane in some cases is to go ahead and seek out any possible lysosomal enzymes that did have the M6P modification and somehow got rerouted and went through the constitutive pathway and escaped out into the outside of the cell, perhaps stay the bloodstream. So these M6P receptors that get recycled to the plasma membrane are there to pick up any stragglers that might have gotten lost along the way.